Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 Minute Moan. The topic of this 10 Minute Moan is Kate Forbes, who seems to have been able to go from the person who looked like they could save this party to acting like every other single person in this party. Now, the story I'm going to relay to you by adding on my own comments is from the Scottish Daily Express, where David Walker, the political reporter, has put together a story with the headline, Kate Forbes claims SNP lost the election as Scots wanted Tories out, despite the Nats losing out in five seats to their arch rivals. The Deputy First Minister is steering clear of blaming anyone or any policies for her party's brutal general election defeat, instead insisting it was through matters out with their control. So much for this mob going to listen to the public, right? When they're now, they seem entrenched in this attitude that it wasn't their fault, it wasn't any of their policies, and it was just the Scottish people wanting rid of the Tories. Now, correct me or if I'm right or wrong here, but that's about the only thing you guys went to the polls with saying, vote for us, we'll get rid of the Tories. What an arse you made of that, eh? So, the story. Kate Forbes insisted that her party fought a vibrant and positive campaign despite suffering, suffering heavy losses. And she insisted that part of the reason why they'd lost so badly was due to Scots wanting to get rid of the Tories, even though they won five out of the six contested, where it was a direct battle between the two parties. Right? Now, I'm unsure what Kate's understanding of the words fought a, a vibrant and positive campaign. There was nothing vibrant nor positive about it. The claim was, we've put in the page one, line one in our manifesto, but never explained outside one paragraph how you were going to achieve that, and the reason you gave how you were going to achieve it was a lot of nonsense, because you were claiming if you get 29 seats, you were going to turn up at Westminster and demand a referendum, when that could have been achieved with about 30% of the vote. So, the idea you had to achieve independence was totally rotten. Nobody would have agreed to it, right? What you might have agreed to is if you'd got over 50% of the vote, but that's not what you told the public. The other thing that you told us in this positive campaign was that you were the only people able to remove the Tories from Scotland. And what an ass of that you made, eh? First Minister John Swinney claimed similar when he faced the media after a nightmare July 4 for the Nats, where they were reduced from 48 seats down to just nine, alongside a total wipeout south of Dundee. He proclaimed that they would win back the trust of Scots. Good news for you, Mr Swinney and Kate Forbes. Getting the trust of Scots is not talking more bollocks to us, right? Because for you to claim, and for Kate Forbes to claim that you fought a vibrant and positive campaign, and the only reason you lost was nothing to do with you guys, nothing to do with your policies, but all to do with Scotland wanting rid of the Tories, is just total bollocks, right? Total bunkum. And you will not, you're not listening to anybody by declaring this. <clears throat> there has been some honest feedback so far from those defeated SNP MPs, with Joanna Cherry and Stuart MacDonald indicating that the party had lost its way by fo focusing on issues that Scots just don't care about. The former blamed the leadership of Nicola Sturgeon. But the Deputy First Minister steered clear of criticising anything specific in her column for the pro ending newspaper, The National. Instead, retreading the old excuse that the heavy SNP defeat was the result of tactical voting to get rid of the Tories. If this was true, then the Nats would have won six seats held by their arch rivals, but they only won one to them. She wrote, During the campaign, I had the privilege of spending time with our SNP candidates and activists, working tirelessly across the country. I saw firsthand the enormous effort and collective drive to achieve an SNP win in every single constituency in Scotland. This is about, it's I think absolutely amazing. See all the MPs that were sitting in Westminster that hadn't decided to retire and they were out canvassing. They were all telling us what a fantastic um, party the SNP were, right up to the Thursday of the election. Then on the Friday morning when the results started to come in, the same people started telling us that the SNP are not that good once they'd lost their £91,000 a year jobs. So I don't know how <coughs> the enormous effort and collective drive to achieve an SNP win in every single constituency in Scotland panned out, 
but it wasn't very successful. She goes with this word again. I believe that we fought a vibrant and positive campaign, and that is thanks to our hardworking members. I am truly grateful to every one of our activists for their efforts. Ultimately, it was not enough, and too many MPs lost their seats, and too many candidates did not have the opportunity to serve their constituents in the House of Commons. I am especially st- sorry for the direct and immediate impact this has on MP staff who put in a shift to ensure their member can serve to the best of their ability. As a party and as a movement, we must reflect on the message voters in Scotland sent us on July the 4th. Well, you've already told us that you're not going to listen, Kate, because you've told us that it's everybody else's fault, bad yours. So what's the point? Why are you talking nonsense when you've already decided that it wasn't your fault? The urgency of getting rid of the out-of-touch UK Tory government was pressing to the people of Scotland. Let's ask you to consider something here. Imagine turning that statement round and making it about the horrid Parliament. And I was to say, the urgency of getting rid of the out-of-touch Scottish SNP government was pressing to the people of Scotland. Because that's what they've done to you. That endeavour was of course fruitful and the Tories have left Downing Street but not a moment too soon. Thank goodness we all have the responsibility to listen to the electorate and learn from their views. This is especially important for those of us in senior positions within the SNP. So what you also done earlier on there is you've claimed that the Scottish people were tactically voting to get rid of Tories. We weren't. We were tactically voting to get rid of you. But you don't want to see that. You want to just live in this bubble where you are blameless. And your party are well liked and loved. I've got news for you, Kate. You are not. In government, my colleagues and I around the cabinet table have a duty to regain and re-earn the trust of the Scottish electorate before the 2026 Holyrood election. We must deliver for the people of Scotland in everything we do. The issues we face together as a nation are too serious for political point scoring between Holyrood and Whitehall. You've spent the last 17 years point scoring between Holyrood and Whitehall. It's all you can do. You cannot govern. You can only blame. In the north and south of the country, the Nats lost one seat to the Tories, but did gain two. Although this was thanks to new boundaries. Richard Thompson was kicked out of Gordon, while Andrew Bowie, John Lamont and David Mundell held on to Aberdeenshire and Fries the Borders, while Alistair Jack's old seat was kept blue by John Cooper. Right, so that's the story finished. What have we learned? We've learned that Kate Forbes is just turning into atypical SMP MSP. There was people a year ago when she just failed to oust um, Hamza Yousaf as the um, continuity candidate and the candidate that received all the backing from his high up unions in the party. And she managed to get, I think the result was 52-48 in Hamza's favour, which was a tremendous result when you consider Kate Forbes didn't get the report, uh, the rapport and the support from those in the high up echelons of the party. It was a fantastic result, if we're perfectly honest. And then when the John Swinney thing came about, a lot of people felt that she could be a good choice. That didn't happen. She stood back from um, the competition and then she was rewarded by being put in as the Deputy First Minister. But a lot of people, and I include a lot of unionists, myself included, at that time were quite glad that Kate Forbes wasn't because we felt she could be a competent leader. But now she seems to get her foot under the table of cabinet again and is just turning into a atypical SNP MSP. Pr- I shouldn't be sad about it because I, I would prefer the SNP to be full of dafties that just wreck their party because they don't want to listen. But it's sort of it leaves me sad a wee bit because it tells you that even the most, or who appeared to be quite strong characters, get um, changed when they get any bit of power. And it's, it's quite depressing to see that Kate Forbes, who didn't seem an atypical politician, is turning into one. And I just hope that others that can become politicians in the future, who are just normal people, don't turn into Kate Forbes, if I'm perfectly honest with you, and look as if they've got something about them and can remain true to that. 
once they get into positions of power. But I'm afraid it wasn't to be for Kate Fox. She has had an opportunity and she seems to have failed and been able to be herself in her position and be a wee bit different from the normal people and the majority of people in the SNP positions of power. But who am I? Who am I to wish that somebody could have been a bit different for the SNP and I should be delighted that she's just turned into another one of them. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notifications bell. But most importantly of all, unless you're Kate Forbes, any of the SNP cabinet, or the cult that still unfortunately support them. Everybody else, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.